What's up everybody, Ted Forbes here. In this video, I wanna talk about photojournalism. And photojournalism is an area of photography that I have not covered a whole lot in the time that I've done this show. The main reason for that is that mainly my experience is in the art world. So I talk a lot about art and I talk about the history of photography and I really haven't covered a lot of photojournalism until the last couple weeks. And there's obviously been a lot in the news. And last week I did a video on this picture and it's a picture that has made the rounds. It's been kind of covered to death and I'm not gonna talk about it in this video because I did a whole video on that and I'll put a link to that if you wanna go see that. But I was asking the question in the video, is that image iconic? And I really left my own opinion out of it. But my opinion actually is, is that I'm not sure that it is. It doesn't feel like it to me and that has nothing to do with, with the subject matter, what's being said in the image. It's a very strong image. It's a great picture. But we won't know whether things are iconic or not until 20, 30 years have gone by and we look back at a certain time and then that's when you're able to tell if something's iconic. More important to me though is why that image? Because to me, the way that we experience imagery now is much different than it was 20, 30 years ago, uh, pre-internet. We are bombarded with photographs now, and I, I would be interested, I'll have to look this up because I don't know anything offhand, but what is the average, how many photographs does the average person see in a day? Because it is a lot, and it's a lot more than it was in generations before us, like our parents or our grandparents. And the rate that we get information is pretty much within minutes sometimes, if not hours. Um, everything is sped up and there's a lot more of it. And the way news works is, you know, things happen in the world and news agencies pick it up. And there definitely is a herd mentality around a lot of that. And if you think of it like this, there is, I call it a window of attention. And it's the window of attention that people have and you're not gonna get everything there. So that's where we come up with the headline news. And everybody kind of covers the same things on here, but this window of attention or headline news is what we decide is gonna be at the top of the news hour, for instance, it's the headline stories, or it's the front page of a website or the front page of a newspaper and that's the headlines and there is so much more that happens beyond those things and unfortunately a lot of the headlines have been very difficult lately and I talked about that some last week as well but this weekend just for the fun of it I decided to go through there's several news media outlets that do you know the photos of the week on their websites uh, people like New York Times Reuters and I went through because it's not something that I am in the habit of doing very regularly and in going through really uh, nothing further back than about July 9th, so the last couple weeks, um, there were two things I was struck with. One, how amazing the level of talent in the world of photojournalism is now. I mean, it, uh, many wonderful images. I mean, I was really blown away with the quality that I was seeing on these. And two, because images tell the story of what's going on with us as people, as cultures, as the world, how much really is going on in the news that we really never hear about. And that's what's striking. Um, I alluded to this in some videos last week, but what I wanna to do today is I want to, I've just gone through and I've picked some images that I wanna share with you that just stood out to me as being particularly strong. And I think they need to be seen and they need to be shared and nothing more than that. And so I wanna go through these now. This first one I picked, uh, this is actually taken in Scotland. This is Japanese golfer Satoshi Kodera, and he's doing a practice round at Royal Troon. And it's a very simple photograph. This is not anything tragic or anything. It probably represents the best of the best in golf and, and what we look at for those of us that like sports. Um, and I thought it was a particularly strong and striking photograph. It's very poetic in a lot of ways. Several of these will be. Uh, we also saw the opening of the Tour de France this week, which began in Andorra. And you see Italy in the lead here in a breakaway group, followed by Norway. Portugal won Euro 2016, and we also saw Serena Williams celebrate victory at Wimbledon. Spain saw the beginning of the San Fermin Bull Run Festival, which happens every year. And I think in probably a twist of the opposite, England saw the resignation of its prime minister. Here in Dallas, where I live, police mourn the loss of five police officers as funeral services began, and this particular image was done at a uh, public vigil downtown by candlelight. New York City uh, saw a really interesting occurrence that happens twice a year that's often referred to as Manhattan Hinge, and it's a point where either the sunset or the sunrise aligns with the grid of the street layout in New York City. Um, this is a particularly strong image that I really was drawn to, and this is a Nepalese Hindu priest who's leaving a temple, and this temple is located five kilometers southeast of Kathmandu. And at the same time, we saw Mongolia begin its summer festival with this wonderful photo with the blue tones um, and faded light. 
Um, this next image is really interesting. This is two dancers getting ready for a performance, which is actually in Durban, South Africa, and they're there to entertain the Indian Prime Minister as well as the Zulu King. In Kashmir, and this is a strong image and again very poetic, uh, this is the site where the day before eight protesters were killed and over 200 I think injured after thousands defied a curfew that was put into effect and you see this image the next day of a man feeding pigeons. We saw the aftermath of a massive suicide bombing in Karanda which was very underreported. And we also saw the underreported retrieval of the 1995 massacre victims in Serbia from mass graves. And essentially these were victims of probably one of the greatest mass killings in human history since World War II, uh, which happened in 1995. There's been a memorial that's built. The families were allowed to come in and mourn their relatives as the bodies are being moved to the memorial site. This is a really weird image. And this is a couple attempting a selfie during a volcanic eruption in Indonesia. Um, another particularly interesting image is this one. This is illegal water pipes that you see that pump sewage from a slum that's located outside Rio de Janeiro. And what's even more tragic is they pipe sewage into the bay where sailing competitions are going to be taking place at the Olympic Games in August. Um, this next set of images is particularly poetic and they have nothing to do with one another other than location and time. They were done by three different photographers. Um, this first one is a five jet fighters that are flying over Paris on their way to participate in a Bastille Day military parade. Uh, the second image is an approaching storm that you see looming over the French Riviera. And of course, in the hours that followed, we saw what happened with the uh, terrorist attack on the people at the Bastille Day celebration in Nice. And then finally, and I think this image sums it up quite nicely. Um, it shows a lot of humanity. Um, I don't know that it's a groundbreaking image, but it speaks very clearly. And this is actually a woman in Bangkok, and she's a member of the French community, and she's holding a candle during a vigil remembering the lives lost in Nice the day before. And I know this seems like a random selection of images. This is really just the last couple weeks in pictures. And I purposely tried to get things that weren't directly related to news events that everybody's familiar with. Although there are some amazing images that you may not have seen around larger news events in there as well. And I tried to cover the gamut because I think that's what you realize with the world. It's a big place. There's a lot of tragedy. And there's also things that are very inspiring and really there's all shades in between. And I think this is what really kind of caught my attention the most. I didn't cover everything I wanted to because this show would be really long. Um, I didn't talk about situations happening in with the Congolese or in the Sudan or I mean, there's some really grim stuff that's happening in the world. And I'm not trying to be doom and gloom or anything like that. What I'm trying to do is show you the quality of photojournalism and some of the things that mainstream media does not um, make clear or share with us. And I think that this is a good venue to do that maybe. And this is what I want your opinion. And I want to know what you guys think. And I want you to leave me a comment on this. Is this something that you'd like to see is more a part of the show? I don't cover photojournalism on a regular basis. But I think sometimes maybe doing images of the week or every two weeks or something like that might be interesting. And the whole idea behind this is just to simply show an awareness of what's going on in photography today and in the world today because I think photography, it, that's the subject. It's, it's part of who we are and it's part of what our culture is. So I want to know what you guys think and if this is something that you'd like to see me refine a little bit more than I did today. This was just kind of a smattering of images but like to see me cover more. I think that photojournalism tends to get covered only when there is, um, you know, possibly things that have gone wrong like the Steve uh, McCurry um, scandal with Photoshop and I think there's so much more to photojournalism and then that and something that I'd like to do. And if you like this video, please remember to like it, share it, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.